Someone who took football, of course, very, very seriously, but perhaps himself not that seriously. He always seemed to have a smile on his face and a bit of a joke for people. He was from that generation of managers with the big overcoats, the sort of Malcolm Allisons and the big fedoras. And he took Crystal Palace from the second division into the first division in the late 70s. And that was the catalyst for him to become a bit of a tabloid star. And he was always courting the sort of sun in the mirror and he became a bit of a ledge in that way. He then did the same at Queen's Park Rangers. I'm remembering this in real time as a, as a young kid into football. And then somehow he became Barcelona manager and he won them the title in the early 80s. And it was the first trophy that Barcelona had won for 11 years. Was that, a bit, was that a bit weird at that stage? It was. was. Was there a lot of were there a lot of England manager, England uh, English I should say managers going out to to other parts of the world, especially a, a very big and important club like Barcelona? It was exactly that. It was a new adventure. Barcelona had English managers, but a hundred years ago, when football was being exported to the world from England, the yes. Sheffield rules. We've got this game with the round ball, don't you know? Okay, very nice. <laughs> so, but Terry Venables came there when Spain became better than us. Yes, yes, and and then led them to. The the title, Gary Lineker, Steve Archibald, all those players then went to Barcelona and then he came back and managed Gaza and Gary at Spurs again. They didn't quite win the title, they finished third. This is in the 1990s. And then he got his chance to become England manager, by which time he was a bit of a controversial figure because Sir Alan Sugar, as he was at that time, then he became Lord Sugar, kicked him out. What, what was their beef? What, 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 what went on there um, to remind us about um, that? Well, uh, we won't go over old ground, but there was uh, there were financial issues that Lord Sugar didn't like on the balance sheet. Right. And uh, Terry, even so, that was part of uh, how he was remembered at the time. Still got the England job and actually inspired an England side to the semi-final when we didn't look like we were going to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that was a team with Stuart Pearce and... Paul Gascoigne and Darren Anderson and, and some David big, Platt. very big personalities. David there. Seaman. Were, were they easy to manage? Uh, the the sort of uh, Pierces and, and Gazes of this world. Yeah, I think Stuart Pierce was a bit of a self starter, <laughs> and he had a little bit of a a, a a thing to deal with, which was he missed a terrible penalty at Italia ninety. Yes, and then he came back and uh, he scored the penalty against Spain, and he went absolutely crazy in a way that get out the way. Stuart Pierce is celebrating. Yes, but then. The current England manager, Gareth Southgate, missed a vital penalty. I remember penalty. it well. You know all about I remember it. it well. And the great thing about Terry Venables is we'll all remember how he took Gareth Southgate and held his head and I remember hey, that, hey, yeah. because that's what Venables was. He was a human being manager. You know, he wasn't a, a tactician in that way. I mean, I'm not saying he wasn't a great tactician. He yes. knew his football. But he didn't expect the impossible. But there was, there was a humanity mm -hmm. about El Tel. And that was his nickname, El Tel. El Tel. So that, when, did that come from the Barcelona link? It came from way? Barcelona. Yeah, by the yeah. way, Howard Kendall then went over. It's not remembered. He went to Athletic Bilbao and he became El Kel. El Kel, right. So, <laughs> but just, just not as well remembered. Not quite so. as remembered. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll miss him. And he hasn't been well for a number of years. And, of course, he was on with... Des Lynham in the noughties doing Champions League football on ITV. Yes, and, uh, of course. They yeah. basically chuckled their way through sort of half-time and full-time as though they'd started their big match dinner after the game. You can imagine <laughs> them going out in Rome, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going out laughing like Sid James, both of them, having a great time. And it was, it was very engaging stuff. Des, approximately the greatest sports broadcaster of all time. <laughs> it really is. And with El Tell. It was it was great stuff, yeah. and uh, you know you can't have that anymore. And we've all politically correct in football. You can't have Des and Tell on anymore. No, you can't. You which can't. is a shame because it was a great watch. He was wasn't Des Lynham the one who said uh, some of you might have heard there's a football match on tonight. Yes. Uh, yeah. With the, well, that was the semi final. That event, was the, it. Was yeah. Italia ninety. Yeah. Ita oh, Italia ninety. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember they did. They actually did um, a Pizza Hut ad uh, mm -hmm. when they had Stuart Pierce and um, Southgate and Southgate and Stuart Pierce saying, "Miss, can we get the, <laughs> can we get the menu? Miss." So don't worry, it only took me six years to get. It. Which is um, lovely because this is the golden age of football mm. and if only we could return to some of the bonhomie and laughter that there was around the game. Was it less serious then? Was it, was it more, more fun? Yes, it, I think it was. And, it and he was, was also, a character, El Tell was a, was a character who brought fun to it, wasn't it? It was, and it was the era of the Premier League we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly the Premier League sort of professionalised the old first division and these guys were saying, oh, we've got a few quid here suddenly. Yeah. And they brought in players from around the world, Ruth Hullet and Gianluca Vialli and Thomas Brolin. And Venables was still managing. He managed Leeds United and Middlesbrough towards the end of his 
uh, career and then took on the mantle of being a pundit and he was good at that as well so yeah. rest in peace Terry Venables. Um, we're going to um, if you have uh, memories of Terry Venables do give us a shout 0344 499 1000 is the number to call uh, definitely want to hear some voices some tributes to Terry Venables um, uh, we've, we've got quite a few people in touch including um, someone saying uh, Leighton says sad to hear about Terry Venables passing a true great he was also the co-writer of the Hazel books which became a TV series uh, starring Nicholas Ball is that correct? That's correct and also had a, he had a sing song he was like your dad at a wedding <laughs> I mean it wasn't the best thing he did but he really fancied himself they had this great self-confidence this sort of top of the pops pictures where he's singing away and it, like this is before karaoke yes he would have been fine at karaoke but, but that would have been a better but, you know, time come on mate you know. in, in many skills but perhaps singing wasn't one of them <laughs> he was okay uh, yeah someone else actually Stephen London makes that point about the TV series here and what, what was that series? What it was, was a 70s detective show. <laughs> really? Um, and wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, because everything was detectives in those days. Yes. Yeah, I'll sort this out, no problem. In 59 minutes and 50 seconds, yeah. mate, no well, problem. Well, I, I used to love the Sweeney. Get your dresses yeah. on. You're Nick. You're Nick, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. And they were called, mysteriously, Regan and Carter before those two were presidents. <laughs> that's right. That's yes, so that's weird. Right. That is weird, isn't it? Yeah. You're Nick, Sam. John, John Thaw and uh, Shat It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dan and Ken says, sad news, Terry Venables was a f uh, fantastic personality. Uh, really unlucky lucky not to bring it home. How unlucky was he not to bring it home? Um, because obviously we think that because uh, we all want England to win and even though I'm not from England and not a big football person, I certainly want England to win at Euro 96. But how, how close was it and how devastating was that uh, looking back on that time? Oh, I was at the uh, game. Tell. You were at the game? I was at the game. I was at all the Euro 96 games and it was Gaza's toe and he lurched for a sort of grass cutting cross. My eyes are closed thinking about it. And he sort of just arrived a bit late. He couldn't believe the ball had come in. And he just oh, didn't quite get to it. And then it was penalties. And we lost on penalties. Mm -hmm. But we took good penalties. Uh, but we missed one. And it yes. was Gareth's penalty yes. that we missed. And then, as Badil and Skinner narrated in their Euro 98, uh, World Cup 98 song which was um, that we should have won it. It was the Germans against the Czech Republic in the final. And, of course, we would have beaten the Czech Republic. Yes. We would have beaten them, like, 4-0. They shouldn't have been there. They were the 80-1 <laughs> outsiders, but they got yes. through. And it was Germany again. Mm, mm. It was again. Adding, adding, oh, no. Adding to the At Wembley. 30, 40, 50, 60 oh, years of course. And we still yeah. haven't won it. No, I know. We um, lost in the final at Euro 2020. I know, I, I remember it's watching it. terrible. Yeah. Anne says, uh, Peter, so sorry to hear the sad news of Terry Venables, one of life's good guys who never took himself too seriously. And uh, my last, uh, yeah, uh, or, I, uh, um, yes, rest in respect, says Dan as well, not just rest in, in peace, but rest in respect as well. What was he like as a player? Because um, obviously um, I, I knew he was a player, but I didn't know the chronology of it. My football knowledge is, is pretty limited. I'd be the first person to say that. But Chelsea, Tottenham, QPR as well, what, what, what was his what was his legacy he like as a player? player. People, yeah. yeah, he's a good player. He's probably a better manager, but a good player. He played mm -hmm. with Jimmy Greaves at Chelsea, and it was that sort of King's Road thing going on at Chelsea in the 60s. Look, she's got a lovely miniskirt. <laughs> and I'm sure he had a, an eye for the women as well, and uh, probably did. And, um, uh, look, he was part of that sort of showbiz era, and Chelsea were good. Yes. Um, and he also played at Spurs. They had a bit of a showbiz sort of element to them. Queen's Park Rangers less so, but we'll, they <laughs> yes. don't mind. They don't mind. But you're right with um, Chelsea. I mean, especially during that era, the sort of Mary Quant and the roaring, roaring, the, the yeah, sort of 60s and 70s. in and, and around yeah. all the yeah. laughter and fun. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it just sort of stayed with him. He was that sort of guy. He had a he had like a sort of nightclub in, in Kensington High Street called Scribes West as well. <laughs> really? Yeah, and he used to sort of call all the journalists. <laughs> which is approximately the reason why he became England manager, because they were all on his side. <laughs> right, OK, they'd all got um, the free drinks. But he was drinks. just a part of the kind of... Um, the sort of collusion between the, the, the football media, and not all of them, because Graham Taylor wasn't. Yes. Um, Graham Taylor used to get turnipped and sweeted up on the back pages because Graham was a slightly more provincial character, a bit more about football and learning and being more more diligent and about... And he wasn't sort of mates with these guys, whereas Terry was, you know, he was a Londoner and he yes. had that swagger. Uh -huh. And, of course, he was like those guys. I mean, I think he probably had the talent to be a writer as well. He, he did, well, but, I mean, yeah. I think he would have been a very good... He would have been a very good football journalist, Well, well Anna's Ar been in touch to say, here's was a brilliant series, and yes, I am that old um, <laughs> as well. And uh, Gaza in Yorkshire says, uh, Peter L. Tell was my hope in 96 RIP the big V as well uh, I think do we have a statement um 
Dave, um, uh, it uh, has been WhatsApped to me, which I'm going to uh, read here. No doubt there will be all sorts of people who are um, paying tribute and so on uh, to Terry Venables. It hasn't come up on my WhatsApp. I think there might be a connection problem. Someone could perhaps print that for me. Uh, Chris, the producer, is bringing it in here. Uh, there are certainly a lot of people paying tribute to Terry Venables. And on Twitter as well, I'm sure you're seeing uh, quite a lot of reaction, Johnny, in terms of uh, the, big, the big figures. Um, so we have... Um, here we are. Yes, the League Managers Association Chief Executive Richard Bevan has said the League Managers Association is deeply saddened to hear of the passing of a League Managers Association member and former League Managers Association President Terry Venables. Our thoughts are very much with the vet and all of Terry's family at this time. And uh, of course, that is, uh, he made over 500 appearances for Chelsea and uh, they are, they have also said, um, we are totally devastated by the loss of a wonderful husband and father who passed away. This is family passed away peacefully yesterday after a long illness. That's the family statement on uh, Terry Venables. We would ask the privacy be given at this incredibly sad time to allow us to mourn the loss of this lovely man who we were so lucky to have had in our lives. I think we were pretty lucky as a, as a nation to have had him in our lives as well, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he can say, even though, you know, the kind of major trophy that he won actually was in Spain, which kind of was his big reputational big one he wasn't sir alex ferguson in terms of yes. winning all the time arsene wenger he did fulfill her, uh, his his great career he did manage everywhere he wanted to and uh he was a great tv personality as well so um he wasn't quite the football man in the orthodox sense of being at one club for a long time although as you say at chelsea he spent most of his senior career there but as a manager and as a sort of personality he was sort of Slightly bigger than the 90 minutes, wasn't he? He was, yes, a, he was a singer, a writer, and a, and a TV personality, and we'll miss him. Um, Peter, great to hear this interview, all done with a laugh. Terry would have loved it. Uh, great, says what a Cyril, compliment. Which is nice. Also, someone says, is that Harry Hill talking about El Tel? Um, That's <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll, put my, I'll put my jacket on and, and take the pens out the top of it. <laughs> um, quite a lot of people saying it's great listening to you. I'm full of nostalgia. I mean, what are, what are the memories that you'll have? What are the kind of key moments of his of his managing career? Obviously, you were there for a lot of it in terms of the England matches, Johnny. It must, you must have be thinking about a lot of things. Uh, you must have a lot of memories thinking today of, of the great things that uh, Terry Venables achieved. I think the greatest moment was in the group stages when England beat Holland 4-1 and we sent them home. <laughs> Holland. Yes. And we yes. thrashed them uh -huh. and it was 4-1 and it was 4-0 at one point and we played beautifully, Sheringham and Shearer scoring all the goals and Holland with that great team in the orange. We're sending them home, this great Holland who was supposed to win this tournament. Holland scored a consolation goal, I think through Bergkamp right at the end which rather comically, on goal difference, sent Scotland home. Right. <laughs> okay. So all, all of that sort of together, my goodness. Um, which, is, which is, of course, the joke in football, which is that our song was Three Lions. Yes. And Scotland's uh, World Cup song is Three Games. <laughs> <laughs> goodness me. Uh, Kenny has been in touch from Edinburgh. He said, uh, hi, Cardi P. If Terry Venables had stayed as manager, England would have won uh, the World Cup. Mm. He had that X factor of success. In 2002, he says, a successful manager, uh, he had that X factor a successful manager needs. He made me cry at Euro 96, but was such a classy guy. It was hard to hate him for it. And that's from a Scotsman, Johnny. Fair play. Thank you very much. A Terry non McVenables. <laughs> non McVenables. The scourge yes. of Scotland. <laughs> Absolutely. If you're just joining us, we have that breaking news this lunchtime that Terry Venables, the former England manager and a very good player, of course, as well, has died at the age of 80. I'm delighted that Johnny Gould has very quickly uh, and kindly uh, nipped into the studio to talk about him, which we're going to do for a few more minutes. And if you have memories, do text the many at 7 222. Terry Venables, 80 years old, sadly uh, no longer with us, but a lot to remember. And a lot to celebrate from a life well lived uh, quite a character so do give me a ring if you want to talk about him uh, 0344 499 1000 you can text me on 87 triple two uh, you can uh, put the word talk in your text so it comes up in the screen in front of me or you can tweet me at talk tv or follow me at peter cardwell and uh, uh, texting is what one person has done l tell was responsible for the best performance i've ever seen from an england team against the dutch in euro 96 and that was exactly what johnny was just talking about there and uh, that will that will go down as a as a, a wonderful memory for so many people looking back on terry venables today absolutely right 
that that tactical victory over Holland was, I think, his greatest moment. I mean, of course, he managed for so long. Peter Ridsdale was the Leeds United chairman when they were top of the league, and he played tennis with Terry. He had a great way of building a relationship, and Peter Ridsdale liked to be sold to. <laughs> right. Now, okay. Peter, Peter wasn't at Leeds for very long, and he said... I played tennis with him, and he made me feel like Bjorn Borg. That was approximately the quote. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, well, blimey. And I thought, no Goodness wonder you got me. the Leeds job. <laughs> yes, um, indeed. And he wasn't there for very long. And I think he managed, oh, he, he managed with Brian Robson at Middlesbrough, and they did their very best to get on because they were, you know, they were both the alpha males, and yes. Brian was from the younger generation. And uh, it didn't quite work out in the way that they were hoping. And this was towards the end of his managerial career. It's it's no stain on his career at all, but, I mean, you know, yeah. you want... If your team was struggling... Of course. You know, you'd want someone, like an elder statesman, to come in and sort it out, a bit like Sam Allardyce tried to do at Leeds United. Yeah. So if you get you get the older guys in to fix the defence up... Indeed. ...and then you realise you haven't got the players and, and you <laughs> go a, down, that's approximately what happened. Slight issue. Uh, we've had Tottenham, of course, was uh, the team, uh, probably the team, apart from the England team, that, that Terry Venables was, was most associated with. Of course, he played for them and uh, managed them as well. They're going to hold a minute's applause and players will wear black armbands. This is the fixture later on at home. And I can assure uh, you the Aston Villa fans will join in. Of course, absolutely, they yeah, and uh, they're going to be wearing black armbands. Uh, they're at home to Aston Villa, they're at White Hart Lane. Uh, we are extremely saddened to learn of the passing of Terry Venables, our former player, manager and chief executive who passed away, said a club statement. We extend our sincere condolences at this sad time to Terry's wife, Yvette, his close family and friends.